more we study the evidence that is being assembled all over the earth, the more inescapable the conclusion that man had best prepare himself for the greatest event in human history. During our first mission to the moon, Mission Control recorded the following broadcast of strange noises that were heard on the Apollo 11 spacecraft. In his book, Secrets of the UFOs, ufologist Don Elkins made the following observation. I have found that some people can achieve the contact phenomenon simply by being hypnotized, and the same general message permeates over 90% of the millions of words received by thousands of people around the world. No one knows what hypnosis is. No one knows what goes on in the mind. It's an altered state of consciousness like yogis and uh, witch doctors have been practicing. Uh, it loosens the normal connection between your spirit and your brain. And, of course, if the hypnotist can control you, make all kinds of suggestions, make you think uh, things are happening that are not happening, make you think you have powers that you don't, experiences that you haven't, even implant memories. Uh, other beings, if there are other minds out there, they could also do the same thing. Sir John Eccles, Nobel Prize winner for his research on the brain, describes the brain as, quote, a machine that a ghost can operate, unquote. What he means by that is your spirit operates your brain in a normal state of consciousness, in an altered state, reached under yoga, a TM, hypnosis. Uh, you have loosened the normal connection between your spirit and your brain, and that allows another spirit, other entities, other minds to interpose themselves and begin to tick off the neurons in your brain, create a, a universe of illusion. I believe that it's demonic. I think all of the evidence indicates this. Some people claim that by allowing themselves to be put into an hypnotic trance, they are acting as a channeling device in which the extraterrestrial being speaks through them. The following is an actual sampling of those messages. We come from the Interplanetary Confederation of Solar Systems, and our purpose is to aid our brother man on the planet Earth as the new age dawns. The teacher that was known to you as Jesus was able to use many more of the abilities than the people of this planet. Unfortunately, man upon planet Earth has misinterpreted the meaning of this man's life. He was no different from any of you. He was simply able to remember certain principles. These principles may be realized by anyone at any time. It is only necessary that you avail yourself to our contact through meditation in order to begin to re-realize that which is rightfully yours. UFO researcher John Weldon then offers this question. How credible is it to think that literally thousands of genuine extraterrestrials would fly millions of light years simply to teach New Age philosophy, deny Christianity, and support the occult? And why would the entities actually possess and inhabit people just like demons do if they were really advanced extraterrestrials? Dr. Pierre Guerin, an eminent scientist associated with the French National Council for Scientific Research, concludes that UFO behavior is more akin to magic than to physics as we know it, and that modern UFO knots and the demons of past days are probably identical. You can literally <clears throat> hypnotize a person, tell them that there's a cat in their lap, they will see it, they will hear it, purr, they will pet it and feel it. It's not physically there. You tell the cat to scratch them, you know, and bring them out of it. There are scratch marks on their cheek. A non-physical object under the right conditions can leave physical evidence. Uh, I think it's demonic. <laughs> It's a, uh, it's a spiritual power 
of some kind for which there is no physical explanation. It, that you can explain it with the laws of chemistry and physics as we know it. In Close Encounters of the Third Kind, that first film that came out of, about UFOs, the house that the mother and, and little boy were living in, you know, the toys began running around, the screws unscrewing them in the presence of UFOs. What the film was saying was the same people that run UFOs run haunted houses. And I would say that's absolutely true. In 1969, the United States Printing Office issued a 400-page publication entitled UFOs and Related Subjects, an Annotated Bibliography. The author was the senior bibliographer for the Library of Congress, Ms. Lynn E. Coteau. During her research, she read over 1,000 articles, books, and other literature. She summarizes her findings in the preface of the bibliography. A large part of the available UFO literature is closely linked with mysticism and the metaphysical. It deals with subjects like mental telepathy, automatic writing, and invisible entities, as well as phenomena like poltergeist manifestations and possession. Many of the UFO reports now being published in the popular press recount alleged incidents that are strikingly similar to demonic possession and psychic phenomena that have long been known to theologians and parapsychologists. This document was compiled for the United States Air Force and is now in the Library of Congress. Dr. Jacques Vallée has addressed the United Nations on UFOs and was the model for Lacombe in Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. He is the author of eight books on UFOs and has been widely recognized as the premier investigating scientist in the realm of UFO research. In his book, Messengers of Deception, Vallée says, an impressive parallel can be made between UFO occupants and the popular conception of demons. And in his book, Confrontations, he writes, The medical examinations to which abductees are said to be subjected, often accompanied by sadistic sexual manipulation, is reminiscent of the medieval tales of encounters with demons. He also made this statement, I believe that when we speak of UFO sightings as instances of space visitations, we are looking at the phenomenon on the wrong level. We are not dealing with successive waves of visitations from space. We are dealing with a control system. And he states, UFOs are the means through which man's concepts are being rearranged. They are engaging in a worldwide enterprise of subliminal seduction. Jacques Vallée, at least at that time when he wrote that book, was an agnostic. Interesting that he comes to basically the same conclusions I do as a Christian from my research. And he said uh, about UFOs, they're real, but they're not physical. They're messengers of deception. And this was based on his research of about 20 years. They seem to be psychologically preparing, setting us up for some ultimate delusion that is too horrible even to imagine as yet. I would agree with that. Dr. I.D.E. Thomas is one of a long line of Welsh preachers. He is currently the senior pastor at the First Baptist Church of Maywood, California, and has authored several books which have enjoyed wide circulation. In his book, The Omega Conspiracy, Dr. Thomas explains the phenomenon of unidentified flying objects and offers an explanation that could identify the beings who operate them. As incredible as his explanation may sound, let us regard the ancient saying of Heraclitus, who 500 years before Christ said, Because it is sometimes so unbelievable, the truth escapes becoming known. The answer to all this and the clue to this cosmic riddle may be found in the ancient book of Genesis. And back there in chapter 6, we are told of a very amazing and bizarre event. The sons of God saw the daughters of men and saw that they were beautiful and they lusted after them. And then we read they married them and sired children from them. For the past 1500 years, most scholars, including evangelical scholars, have interpreted the sons of God as the good sons of Seth 
are the daughters of men as the wicked daughters of Cain. They've adopted that interpretation because the other one is so bizarre and outlandish. The ancient interpretation, and in my opinion the correct one, is that the sons of God were demonic beings or fallen angels, and that they came down to earth, they lusted after the daughters of men, they married them, and produced this amazing progeny, this hybrid progeny of the Nephilim. And the very word Nephilim does not mean giants. It comes from the root Nephal, fallen ones. The early Christian fathers in the first four centuries, men like Irenaeus, Tertullian, Ambrose, for 400 years they knew no other interpretation except that the sons of God were angelic beings. Josephus, the cosmopolitan Jewish historian, says the same thing. We read in the book of Job that when God laid the foundation of the earth, the sons of God shouted for joy. Obviously the sons of God could not be human beings. Adam had not been created. If this was a case of just mixed marriages between good men and wicked women, it is surprising that God should have issued the fire of judgment that he did. God took this stern action of wiping out the human race. Now the only family that were left intact in order to re-establish, repopulate the new world was the family of Noah. Noah, we are told, was perfect in his generations. The word perfect does not mean, in this case, morally perfect. Because we know from the story of Noah, and especially what happened after the flood, that Noah was not perfect. Uh, what it means is like a lamb uh, for the paschal sacrifice, that lamb had to be without blemish. Uh, physically pure, without blemish. So it seems was the case of Noah. The only family that remained uncontaminated from these strange beings that appeared from space. Uh, the only line that was pure and clean from God's standpoint to start a new world and a new civilization. Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, so in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Of all the patriarchs and prophets of the Old Testament, the key to prophecy above all others is Noah. And something happened in the days of Noah that was a distinctive characteristic of Noah's time that didn't happen before or after. Wars and famines and pestilences and natural disasters have always happened. But something happened in the days of Noah and the most sinister and bizarre of all the things that happened was this intermarriage between the angelic race and the human race. And of course the mastermind behind it all was another angel a fallen angel, Lucifer. Now we believe that as they came in those days, we may very well be on the edge of another invasion from outer space. That Satan will once again make another attempt, may be the final assault on the human race in order to wean men and women away from the worship of God. He has tried before, he will inevitably try again. And by seducing the human race, by sending these so-called entities from space, demonic beings, he will try to get people all over the world to worship him and to deprive God of the worship that is due to him. Fortunately, we know what the end result is going to be. But this final or omega assault that will come at the end of time may trigger the coming back of Jesus Christ to rescue his own. Satan has failed before, and the Bible predicts he will fail again. We are told quite emphatically in God's word that the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Satan will make the attempt, but our God greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Thank you.